Mauri Pagliacci of Iron Far here with Matias Sari on the previous of the Mount Marathon race. Matias, nice to meet you. Great to be here. Um, how are you? How, um, where did you just arrived to town? Where Where do you live actually? Uh, I live in Anchorage in the foothills of the mountains and do probably two thirds of my training right out the door, which is pretty convenient. And uh, we like to come down to my marathon a couple days early. Um, start up the mountain, the lower mountain, maybe one last time, and and then uh, race on Saturday. But you pretty much know the the course. How? Uh, what's your history with this with this race and the course? Um, well, this is the ninth time I'm running it. Um, I was living in Fairbanks when I first started in 2007, and a, a friend of mine had done pretty well in it and sort of convinced me to give it a try. Um, yeah, it just took off from there. Once I had done it once, it's such an amazing, unique race. You, you get hooked and you want to come back every every year. And then, uh, yeah, I just started improving and, and went from there. <laughs> all right, and you've been... Uh all around the podium on your previous years and what are your expectations for for this weekend with the whole competition oh. and the uh, weather is looking pretty cool yeah I mean you can't have expectations yeah. in this race I mean any anything can happen and and usually does um, I mean that said I've I've been in the top four places the last each of the last seven years so that would be a, I'd like to continue that streak although definitely a tall order this year um, I mean, if you're off a little bit, you can drop from second to tenth. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really exciting year having having Ricky back and Killian, of course, and a bunch of Alaskans running really well. And uh, I don't, I've never been higher than third to the top of the mountain. So I don't, I sort of try to limit the damage and uh, stay close, and then catch some guys on the downhill um, but that was strategy at least last year started out a little bit slower was maybe in ninth place and and then just caught a few guys on the up and a couple more on the down so that's sort of for me to do well I've got to have a great day and a couple of the a couple of the favorites need to be a little bit off <laughs> yeah but win or lose um, second or 15th it's it's just a celebration out there yeah it's um how, how do you feel with, with with this race? What's your feeling to this? Uh, I don't know. It's a hundred years. It's a huge story around it. And how do you um, how does it involve in your life? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's a it's a one of a one of a kind race. You know, the history is really palpable going back. This is the hundredth anniversary, but the 89th running, I think. Um, so you think about your predecessors out there and. Um, just the extreme nature of, of the course is is unique. You know, we have other technical races, but nothing quite like this. And not a lot of mountains where you can run 2,000 vertical feet of, of scree at breakneck speed, you know, and then tie into a pretty crazy creek section and descend a cliff. And if, after you do all that, you you know, you got thousands of fans to greet you. It's always a rush. It, that never gets old when you come off the mountain and you hear a big roar from the crowd. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you, you sort of exhale too when you get to the road that you made it down safely. You don't think about the danger, but uh, yeah. you know there is certainly palpable danger, and, and people do get hurt in this race. So, um, yeah, then you just run it in the road with whatever you have left. But uh, yeah, it's just like I said, it's 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 a celebration and. Um, you know, after we finish, we all go into the Yukon bar, and you show your bib, you get a free beer, and <laughs> and then the party's on, you know, for yeah. for a long time. <clears throat> That's great. Um, for those who, well, like me, actually, that really don't know you that well, uh, you've been actually second in the deep sea a couple of weeks ago, but what's your background with, with trail running or running or the sports in general? Um... Yeah, long story short, I didn't start running until I was 27 years old when I moved to moved to Alaska, and mm. uh, I'd been hiking, avid hiker before that, and I forget what the trigger was, but I just started running and really, really liked it, and went from there and spent 10 years in Fairbanks, and Fairbanks is a smaller community, and um, so sort of the runners there, they do 5Ks and 10Ks and do the roads and do the trails, and um, but I really started gravitating, gravitating towards towards the trails, and um, decided to leave leave Fairbanks about five years ago, and 
probably one of the main main reasons was to, sort of the mountains mm -hmm. called me, and uh, I was commuting six hours, probably four or five times a year just to do do uh, running or ski races in Anchorage, and that got a little ridiculous. So I decided to move to the mountains, and really glad I did. So um, that's how I that's, that's how I got here in Seward. I guess the two races that are on my calendar every year that um, are non-negotiable would be the Equinox Marathon up in Fairbanks, which is the first marathon I ever ran, and a really special race in its own right, and then Mount Marathon's the other one. Okay. I was fortunate enough to win the race mm -hmm. in 2009, so you're in for life for free that way. That's fantastic. So if I want to skip a year, I can, and I don't have to worry about losing my spot, but it is a... It is an issue, you know. It's it's. They say the only thing harder than um, running my marathon is getting into it. And yeah. uh, and this, I, I really think this race is kill, having Killian come here um, and Ricky. You know, it's this race is going to change. And this, you know, Killian puts out a post, you know, from the summit of Mount, of, of Mount Marathon about how much fun he's having and twelve thousand people like it on yeah. Facebook and. <laughs> You figure quite. A, there's going to be 20 or 30 of them that you know want to come to the race next year. So we'll see how that impacts the race. Um, I don't think the race committee is just going to let everyone let everyone in. Um, there's still a lottery, and then they decide on invitations. But uh, yeah. it's great exposure for the town, and we're you know we're really happy that that they've come. <laughs> yeah, that that was the, my last question actually. How do you feel it's gonna gonna change after like? foreigners come to the race and mm. and, al and also a, a non-alaskan guy did win this race so how do you feel about it too and it's not just any foreigners it's yeah. it's a, yeah, you know the, I mean, the, the best all-around mountain runner in the world yeah. um, <laughs> if Gillian wins I mean we'll be happy for him and we'll celebrate of course I mean we want to keep it in Alaska but uh, yeah if you if Gillian or Ricky happen to win you know, they're gonna have to earn it for sure um, you know how the race is going to change that's that's hard to predict but yeah. um it certainly has not that it's been a secret for alaska but it hasn't had that much exposure outside of alaska and that's definitely changing now with the 3022 movie and yeah. um you know just all the social media so i i think it's it changed for the positive um but we're we're happy to have any any and all come here all right well matthias thank you very much for your time and have a great run on saturday you're welcome thank you